All right, welcome to episode number 54. And today I'm gonna to be showing you the driving circuit of um, that ultrasonic uh, dental transducer, uh, which I purchased quite inexpensively. It's about 40 bucks and it um, yeah, includes a transducer, the driver circuit, the battery, uh, and it's quite, uh, and obviously everything is made to be cost effective. So that makes for a very interesting uh, understanding of the design. It's obviously a low power device. Uh, so I'm going to actually show you what I did here and how the circuit was actually all connected in here. So this is the front panel right there. I'm just gonna put it together very briefly. Like there was, there was this um, interface here. We can press buttons. I obviously tore it apart quite a lot. I cut the back off. I used the Dremel uh, saw and I, and I cut through here and I took off this. And this circuit board was actually, um, I, I since then reconnected this uh, battery, but I can just take this out. And it was actually applied just like that. Um, it was just like this. Actually, it was more like that. Or it was, yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of like, actually, I think this is the, this was the front. Yeah, that's how it went. See this little, this little hole here. This is where the transformer went. And this is where the charger was going on in the back. And okay, this is wires. Okay, there. So, and these were, these are the LED lights that kind of were going on when you press this to on button. This was the, this top part, I broke the back push button. That's the LED push button, but this was a push button to start the ultrasonics. Um, and um, yeah, this is uh, basically how, how I cut it apart and it all went through. Um, and we have now, obviously the, <laughs> the uh, we have where you put the USB for charging. We have the battery, which I didn't take out of this kind of case. So I left that as is, it was glued together a little bit. I'm just gonna put that back in here. Um, just to allow it to work. Um, and we have, obviously there's some, there's some, uh, uh, we take the battery, we, we can boost or reduce the voltage of the battery. Uh, and then we kind of go along further in the circuit, uh, here. Um, let me see how well this does when I get it closer. If it doesn't, um, let's see what the minimum focus distance of this thing is. It's not oh, very great. Um, but Kind of starting from this end, this is the all the battery charging circuit stuff, um, charging the battery, um, stabilizing its voltage. There's probably a voltage regulator here somewhere. Um, here are the LEDs that turn on when you turn on your device. This is the this is the brains right here in the middle. This is the brains. Um, this does the frequency sweeps that I was showing you last time. Uh, this IC also. Uh, it sends the um, it sends the signals to the, the you know the, the the square signals or the, or the on and off signals to our uh, MOSFETs um, and uh, yeah then we have this transformer here and I'm going to be showing you this what, what, what and we have the transformer obviously what it does is it increases the voltage to step up the voltage from the battery uh, MOSFET operation into our actual uh, device uh, so let me. Let me see if my other. So let's go to this. Let's go to this picture. Okay. So this shows in much more detail uh, what's what what's happening. So let me see if I can get my pen out, and I'm also going to draw and show you the actual circuit that's used. So actually, I'm going to do that first. So this is a circuit that's used. Um, now the only difference between the circuit that we actually have. Um, and and the and the circuit that we're going to be showing, I'm just going to draw some black here, is that there's no center tap in the output transformer. Actually, the way I could just eliminate that is to draw in white. It's going to draw in white over it, and it won't exist past that point. There you go. Okay, that's better. Okay, and these dials don't exist either. There's no diodes because we're just gonna. So, but what this is actually called right here, this is a push pull. Um, you know, this is a push pull, pull boost circuit, basically. Um, how it works and how the circuit that we're actually, it works in the same way. So, many ultrasonic, uh, especially compact circuits, uh, utilize um, 
in circuitry normally used for boosting voltage. But you know, normally in order to create a larger voltage from a smaller one, uh, what we do is we take the you know DC DC converter. You take the DC voltage. You have some method of you know transforming it into an AC voltage. At which point you can mess with inductors uh, in order to boost the volt and diodes in order to boost the voltage on the on the output side, which is still going to be an AC an AC voltage. And you can also use transformers once you're in AC to obviously transformers uh, directly imp in increase voltage, decrease current. Um, but to get the voltage to a higher AC. So normally to go from DC to AC to boosted AC, and then we get to, and then we convert that to DC using some metric. Um, for this circuit here, um, we only care about getting, um, let me undo that. We only care, and I'll do this way. Uh, we, only, we only care about getting to that boosted AC voltage here. So um, we don't really care um, about, about turning it back to AC, which is nice because you can keep some of that efficiency and the circuit topology is easy. Uh, now, what exactly happens? And this is true for this case, uh, for this sort of uh, device I'm showing you. This is the exact same circuit which is going into the device I'm showing you. This transformer here, I'm just gonna, let's just draw, let's just give these, these circuit component names. Let's just call it, uh, um, and I think uh, what color would be good for all of these. Okay. Well, drawing got disabled for some reason. Let's try it again. Let's do it in red so we keep keep good. So let's call this TX1 and one, two, three. Uh, and this is the back side. And I'm just gonna erase this. This is not really relevant because I didn't measure it the same way. Um, so this is a one. This is this is TX1 transform one and one. And this is two. You see these these are combined, so I'm just going to call this two, and this is three. Um, all right, so we do have um, uh, these these directly these these terminals directly going to our our our, uh, our MOSFET. Uh, I want to say dra dra drain. Uh, so these are the source, and this is the drain. Um, so our MOSFETs are directly uh, connected in, uh, in that way. These are NMOS. Both of these are NMOS. So we don't have to worry about using N and P to switch different polarity voltages. Um, and this is where our VCC, our, ba uh, our battery doesn't directly connect here. But basically what happens is that when this MOSFET is connected to ground, um, current flows in this direction. And then on the other cycle, this MOSFET is connected to ground and current flows in this cycle. So effectively what's happening is the current flow here, um, we are getting. Uh, so for for one of so, well, let me just draw in colors. And move my head here. I'll move my head there, and actually move my head a little bit lower. I still want to see my head, and I'm just going to let's say let's highlight these. So this this MOSFET is going to be highlighted in red, and let's do another MOSFET which should be highlighted in green. And let's go ahead and draw an axis. So I'm just basically going to show you very generally how the push floor converter uh, works. Um, and we'll get red here. So one of them is going to be a square wave. So when um, uh, when the transducer is operated, basically the VN is connected, uh, we have voltage um, being being applied. So so by switching both of these MOSFETs, effectively you're getting on one side. And if you switch them uh, with opposite polarity, which you will in order to get current to uh, to go in between these different phases. So these are these these two terminals are directly out of phase, uh, which then allows us to further increase voltage. So we have a square uh, square wave pattern there, and then we have let's say for the black one or for the green, let's use green, we have an opposite. So we have 
pulses on the other side um, operated there. And because of the trans the way the transformers developed and where the, the 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 phase the phases are arranged, we end up getting uh, more output here on the other side. So we're able to stimulate the the coils with more current, uh, hence get more uh, output. This would also be seen uh, this transformer here. And I'll just draw it out separately. So usually this is like, for example, you have a 12 volts, a zero volts and 12 volts transformer. And I'm just gonna draw the other side just cause, um, but these are actually out of phase from each other. So orientation. Um, these are out of phase from each other. Uh, so if you do supply, um, and the way the windings work, if you, if you do supply out of phase voltages due to the, um, so a square wave like this would be out of phase, right? And then you have one there, and just the 90 degrees out of phase. So if you have all of that going on, you'll actually get maximum voltage out of this. So you have voltage, go, you know, current going through there one time, current going through there. Now we see current going through, going through our transformer. Uh, then we got, let's say we get our, and we have our voltage applied here, um, our DC voltage applied there. So now we're having AC voltage being put into this transformer. It can then properly um, output the maximum of voltage coming out on the other side. And we're obeying the polarity. So we're actually getting, uh, double, you could say double effectively the voltage uh, and we're playing, we're playing to the phase. So we're not canceling voltages. So we're playing to the phase um, that this transformer wants to work on on the primary side or we're treating as the primary side. So we effectively have that push pull converter and you can look up more information on the push pull uh, by itself and, and other uh, probably other videos on YouTube and, and resources online. But basically there's two MOSFETs. It's, uh, it's pulling current through um, two sides of a transformer at different phases. And hence it's allowing us to uh, produce an AC, AC voltage um, through a transformer. And um, the different phases obviously then allow for doubling of the voltage that would be normally seen or the current which is normally seen through the transformer windings. All right, um, so let's continue here. So we had this, um, I'm labeling this, let's say uh, MOSFET one. MOSFET two or FET one, FET two, I'll just call it M1, M2. So I don't know which one, which M these are, but this is like, you can call this M1, oh, M1, M2. And I will kind of, I can, I can tell you CA2, TFZ. So I wasn't able to find these actual, so the MOSFET was like CA2, TFZ, I don't, I couldn't find any uh, parts that match that MOSFET, but basically anyone will do. Uh, for this specific case, there was a capacitor and a resistor connected. Um, okay, I don't wanna do that. Okay. Um, so I just drew this out here where we have our, uh, we effectively have, Let's ignore this part right now, but we basically have this 10 ohm resistor and we have a capacitor. I don't know, I don't know if it's a, uh, and we have a voltage connected uh, into our, uh, into the center tap of our transformer. Um, and this push pull, push pull converter a topology is exactly, so I was looking a lot toward what this thing was actually doing. It was kind of confusing at first. Um, uh, I'm not familiar with all of the volt boost voltage uh, topologies and, and, and a whole lot of detail. Uh, but yeah, this made perfect sense um, looking up a little bit about how these transformers are utilized and how you can supply voltage in the center tap and therefore um, get different phases coming from the two other uh, terminals of this transformer. So push-pull converter um, with center tap is what you're gonna, what's needed here. So what this device effectively does is that when, and here's that, oh, here's that v battery or here's VCC. Here you see VCC, I, I understand. Uh, green on green is, is not the best. Um, Somebody is calling me. This is poor, um, poor YouTube etiquette here. Um, all right, so VCC, bro. All right, so we got that going on there. So VCC, when you press that button, 
you see, I'm gonna make myself big. That's how I do it. Okay, when you press this button and you go down in this uh, regime here, you go from slow, normal, strong, and super strong, as it says. Uh, as you keep going down, you keep pressing this button here. Uh, you're actually changing this VCC. So it's very simple, like how, it's a very simple method of how it works. Um, so, yeah, it, it's it, and it, it, and this is and these two terminals here, they go to your transducer output. So that goes anywhere from 40 volts to 120 volts, depending on how high you're stepping the VCC. So technically, if you had your, you know, there's always a limit to practical um, devices, but you know, theoretically, if you keep increasing your VCC and your MOSFETs can handle the current, and you will have a higher and higher um, uh, voltage. Um, so remember this diagram. This diagram right here is quite important. Um, uh, these are the drains. And I, do I have the right colors here? Um, all right. Sometimes I gotta reset my. Let's do it in. Let's do it in black. Um, so this is a drain. These are the gates. This is a source. I didn't desolder anything, which made it kind of difficult. Um, this is another side where you have the VCC in case you buy that, buy that, you know, go to Amazon and buy the, um, uh, buy the device. And this is the square wave. One of these, one of these uh, pins goes to uh, the gate here. One of them goes to the gate there. And obviously they're alternating. They're not in, they're 90 degrees out of phase. Um, there's like 150 kilohertz uh, pin there. Uh, and this, I think from here, there's some type of through hole via uh, that, uh, um, some you know some type of way that we get to go from this side, these MOSFETs here. Uh, I, I guess we can call it M1 and M2, and and we get across on the other side of the board uh, to this part one and this three there that um, and the VCC is connected there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the PicoScope program uh, and I'm going to work through showing you on the oscilloscope. Um, these waveforms. All right, so I have my USB oscilloscope. I have my two voltage probes here. Um, and I'm going to let myself get a little bit smaller because I'm not the star of the show, it's the transducer. So let me just make, make that a little bit smaller here. I'll stick myself in the corner so you can still see me and we're going to start probing around but before that i will just turn on the device and i'll just show you what happens so now it's on see these green lights that's the slowest setting and it keeps going and you hold it and it turns off so basically everything works the battery's connected i haven't charged in a while but um uh, now this will be kind of challenging to do, and this will also show you. So there's no true ground. What the closest you're gonna get to ground is like hooking this guy up here. Uh, ah, this is the most I would say annoying part. I didn't make, I didn't solder a ground to this. Man, I think I should have, but I didn't. Oh well. So I'm gonna start probing around. The first place, obviously, I like to probe is these are are the gates. Uh, are we going to get something? Yeah, the gates here and here, the gates of these uh, MOSFETs, just to show you how they're kind of out of phase. The cool thing is, or the, some, the thing is that there's like some stray signals going around. So we're going to be able to trigger off the, even, even off the voltage probes I'm not using, I can still trigger off of it, which is convenient in terms of recognizing phase. Um, so let us, let us, let me turn on the device. So the device is on, uh, and for this channel B, I'm going to lower its trigger. So I'm just going to, and again, I'm just going to use channel B for triggering, actually. I decided that. And it's triggering off A, so let's trigger off B. Okay. And I'm going to start poking around. So I'm going to touch one of the MOSFET gates. And just to remind you, what the MOSFET gates are. Let's go here and go back there. And there are these two pins right there. So the sources will be at ground. This is how I figured out the sources when I touched them, they were at ground. And the drains 
had alternating voltages and the gates did too and the drains were higher than the gates so i'm like okay and the gates were opposite in polarity to the uh uh to um, i just appeared there the gates were opposite in polarity to the drain so because obviously you know when the gates high the drain should be at zero volts because the source and the drain are now connected so let me go back to the uh so i'm touching one of the on one of the gates so this is logic level this is logic so that's about four volts. Let me just expand this out so you can see how this, how the phases are all coming together here. I'm just going to see if I can, see I'm touching it right there. And this is right like that. So basically as I'm looking at it, um, when voltage is negative, when, when this uh, when this trigger signal, the red is this trigger signal, when that's negative, we do have a positive pulse. It's not 50% duty cycle. I'm not sure why they didn't do 50% duty cycle, but they didn't. So it just may be how the reaction time and the uh, and, and what worked best for efficiency wise. So anyways, uh, so this is, um, the, the, it's on when there's a negative. Very much because when we're positive, it's off. So basically, that's how I'm understanding it. This phase, uh, the phase of the trigger signal red, uh, which is just some stray signal coming off somewhere uh, due to the circuit being on. The channel B is not connected actually, and um, the trigger signal and the actual gate of the first MOSFET I'm touching are out of phase. Then when I go to the other one, okay, let's go touch that. Okay. Okay. Something's up there. Well, something certainly seems to be up there. Let me just change that there. I don't know if that's going to help. Well, couldn't tell you why this is not turning the drain here. Okay, that it's definitely working. Let me turn it off and turn it back on. Okay, that's it. Well, it's supposed to be that way, opposite. Okay, I'm gonna pin, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, for some reason I'm not able to measure it. That's kind of strange to me. Uh, I'm gonna actually, I'm actually just gonna show you what it should look like. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually trigger, I'm gonna go, go on these pins and just show you directly on the actual pins of the, uh, of the IC that controls everything, which is obviously not marked. <laughs> um, that's funny. Um, why this channel is getting all crazy on me, I don't know, okay. <laughs> yeah, triggering off like a stray signal is perhaps not the uh, book practice here. And so that's the trick. That's that. So this is the this is one of the triggers. Oops, turned off. I don't want to break. You got to be careful with these pins. So this is one of them. This is auto phase. That's probably the same one we had last time. This one on the other side. That's in phase. See, it's positive when it's positive. And I only got two hands right now. I don't know the helping hand to get this going. And that's positive when it's negative. So basically, two. I don't know why I'm not able to probe this guy. There's maybe some bad connection or it worked fine when I was. I tell you, it worked fine when I was doing that before. Yeah, because this is definitely not going to trigger anything. Um, let me just unhook it. You're, you're watching me struggle a little bit. That's okay. No pain, no gain. Hopefully I don't miss anything. That would be, that would be the true shame. So it should be similar to this, the other MOSFET, but I can't get it. This is the other MOSFET gate, which is kind of surprising me, but that's fine. I'm not going to judge right now. Um, 
let's get into the 20 volts. Let's, so let's see what actually is on the drain. So remember, um, when we have when we have our MOSFET, our, our, our device closed, the drain and source are at the same voltage. So when the, when the but when it's open, uh, we have that inrush current, which is you know the transformer or the inductor keeps wanting to pull. You know the the current wants to continue through the inductor even though there's no voltage, so it uh, it maintains itself uh, in that way, and eventually it would get to uh, the same voltage here. So the maximum voltage um, wouldn't be the VN, but um, it's something similar and you can read more about how this works and simulate it on your own dime. But I just wanna show you and get you started. It's something that you can seek your teeth into. And so that's that. So it's about six volts, I wanna say. So this is a drain, um, right? And look, this is the gate, look, look at the gate. The gate is uh, 180 degrees out of phase with that trigger signal. And the drain is in phase, obviously, because if the gate is on, the drain is closed. So that's okay. In this case here, this is this guy is a little bit screwy on me. I don't understand him. Um, his, his signal is way low. Something's going on here, either not measuring properly or something. But anyways, um, he's kind of opposite. If you see here, it kind of looks like it kind of looks like we're opposite phase. And here it's also opposite. So something's something's up there, but it's still about six volts there. Um, and then I, then I'm going to turn us around uh, to our transformer side. I'm going to I'm going to probe each of these sides here for us. Um, so the VCC is really neat. I want to show you the VCC is also shown right there. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually press the button and watch the VCC change. And I will, and obviously it's a constant voltage or more or less constant. So there's the, there's that value there. So it's about four volts right now. See, so we're four volts. And when I'm changing it, okay, now it's at zero. That's strange. Okay, no, sorry. Four. Um, let me get to a better voltage range. I think that's going to help. Five volts. Actually, I can just put it like that. So okay. So right now we're at we're at the lowest we're at the lowest voltage setting. So this is the battery. The battery is always at five four volts, a little under four. And so this is the VCC. I press it again. It, it increases about half a volt. I press it again. It doesn't increase half a volt, but it increases like something like that. I press it again. It increases, it should be increasing some still more. And I think now we're at the maximum here. So I think this is, this might be better to, so I'm not, I'm not probably right in the, so three volts, I press it once and it's at three and a half, press it again, it gets a little bit higher, press it again, it's a little bit higher. Um, and it gets a little bit more. So that's basically the way it works. And uh, it's, um, you press the button and increases the output voltage. It's not the most stable thing in the world, uh, but, um, but I think it works well for what they asked for. Um, now I'm actually going to probe. I'm going to be pressing the buttons right now. It's not super strong, so we don't want that. Okay, so we're, we're on. Okay, so I'm going to be probing the drain, um, which is right there. And I'm going to show you the drain again. Uh, the drain, which is there. Here and I'm going to be showing you how the drain changes. I'm going to on, the, on MOSFET number one. I'm going to show you how that change in voltage as I press the button and as the VCC changes um, in magnitude. So I'm going to see if I'm going to be hooking there and pressing this button there, not getting shocked. Hopefully. Okay. So we are there, and five volts is not going to cut it here. We just, we just need to get to twenty volts. Um. 
Okay, that's it. Okay, so we're now about, it's about at six volts, the maximum, the, that peak voltage. Okay, now it's almost eight. Now it's like eight sharp. Now it's kind of getting stuck there. And it's just getting some more spurious behavior. I don't know if it has to do with this other side here, this guy. He seems to be capping out right there. Maybe I want to retune. So I turned it off. I'm turning it back on. And let me just do this one again. Let me see what that guy fixed itself and didn't. Okay. So it's about four and a half volts, six volts, eight. And the Spurs mode seems to start like getting kind of crazy here. Getting toward the edge. And um, just for completion, for sake of completion, this is working on 10x. I'm gonna I'm gonna probe the output. So now I'll show you what I'm doing here. I, I have my I have my uh, oscilloscope hooked up to the hooked up to the uh, tool itself, the transducer itself, and I'm gonna be putting this obviously on 200 volts. Um, it don't look good, man. Something, I think I broke something while I was doing all this. That's down to five, that's to two. For that signal, yeah, I think I broke something as I was screwing with it. Maybe the battery's going low. But uh, yeah, this wasn't the signal that we had last time. So it's 40 volts. We have more than 40, we have 80. So something got loose, but uh, that's okay. Um, we are, I, I, I have recording of, of, of it last time where, um, let me see. Um, so of the waveforms, let me just put that there. So I think I screwed up something a little bit because the other MOSFET wasn't working as I showed you. Um, I'm gonna turn the device off and I'm gonna go back to our PowerPoint file. And I will just talk on this a little bit. So here we had um, a battery power device. So I'm kind of summarizing everything. We had a battery power device, pulse pull converter. We converted the battery power, which was then transformed to probably some one of those, uh, uh, maybe, that, maybe that same IC I, uh, that does the um, current sense. There's also a current sense device here. This device right there is a current sense device. I looked up, it's A. 63A, um, that's what uh, device that is. So this back, uh, this back push button was for LED control, which was not what I'm interested in right now. I'm interested in ultrasonics, which was this one. Pressing the button increased the VCC, uh, which is probably went through its own boost circuit. Um, then increasing that VCC, then change the center tap voltage uh, of our push pull converter which then allowed more current to flow through our transformer, hence allowing a larger output on our crystal, which is on this side. Um, lots of you know, devices such as this use similar ideas to boost circuitry. Uh, so boost circuits are, as long as you have an AC voltage, you have an, a, a, a device which can power, which can drive an ultrasonic device. And we obviously need to boost the voltage beyond um, uh, beyond just our um, our normal voltage ranges, which would have, which were you know those square waves that came out came out from here on each of these sides were about eight maximum about a maximum about eight volts or a little bit higher than that. So they're obviously not enough to power a one thousand plus ohm transducer. That's why we have to use a, a transformer there in order to output our uh, our our device. So. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Let me see if I have anything else important for us. Nope. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. That's not mess. That's something else. Um, please feel free to share uh, this content with others. Uh, also check out the links for how to purchase this transducer from Amazon. This is a regular link. Um, uh, also a link to subscribe to my videos. Uh, you'll get a notice whenever they come up, and you'll get some you know get some nice presentation notes in your email. Um, 
as well as check out my consulting offerings that can help you develop an ultrasonic transducer as well as driving uh, drive circuitry to match uh, either for an existing device or a, a new device. I can be your, your guide in helping you through that uh, quite complex process. So thanks you for, thank you for watching uh, this video. I will see you in the next one. I think, um, honestly, for the next video, I'm, I want to be, I want to see if I can control these MOSFETs. Um, I think, I mean, there are a couple of ways, a couple of things that I can do. But I, one idea is I can see if I can control the MOSFET uh, from a function generator. Therefore, I, but that, um, or I might just try some experiments and go straight into characterizing the transducer. That's probably a little more natural and easier for me at this point. Just characterize the transducer using a external amplifier and as we increase voltage, see what happens to the, that transducer um, uh, in, those, uh, in those scenarios. So that'll be kind of cool to go through high power characterization of our transducer. But we won't forget about our push-pull converter because I will probably build one of my own based on what I've seen working here. And I already have a transformer for it. So let's see how high the volt we can push the voltage with maybe some beefier MOSFETs. Maybe we can get some decent voltage out of it in order to drive watts, perhaps, because we were hard, we were shy of driving one watt. And I can also obviously put my own um, uh, frequency tracking so we can be active frequency tracking. As you remember, from this device only checks frequency one time in the beginning. There's a frequency sweep, and that's probably where that current sense device comes into play. There's um, there's a place for it there. So I'll see you in the next video, number 55. Then it'll probably be high power measurement of a transfer of this transducer. Thank you for watching.